Let's see. All right, it's recording. All right, hey everybody. All right, so my name is Olivia Cagle and this is Janine Laughlin and she is our team at Pelvic Floor Physical Therapist and we just wanted to come on here and talk about diastasis and the split and actually other symptoms that go along with it and what we can do about it, what, how actually diastasis can affect us in different ways. So everybody's unique, so everybody's gonna be different for sure. The different symptoms and some of the symptoms that you deal with, you may not even recognize that, hey, this was because of the core. And um, so diastasis sometimes is just one little symptom that like is what motivates people to come in and you know, work with Janine, work with us, work with our program. So, <laughs> Janine, I am going to talk about, we started talking about how the split is what motivates them. So, you want to start there? Yes. So, hi, everyone. Um, I'm a mom of three, so I should put that out there that I've also had a diastasis in my, um, after my first baby, and my doctor kind of poo-pooed it and said, no big deal, don't worry about it. And, <laughs> To that, I said, well, at least I know what to do. I was fortunate, but many of you do not know what to do. So um, I started a business 10 years ago to kind of help moms um, get um, rehabbed after having a baby. So I'm a physical therapist. And what I like uh, with Olivia and I working together is that she's able to give exercises for the long term where I see people with ailments from things like diastasis recti. So when people come in to see me, sometimes they come in for a split, they're very concerned because their abdominal wall just doesn't look right after having a baby. But they're not aware that their back pain or their pelvic organ prolapse, like feeling like there's pressure on their bladder, that they have to urinate frequently, or that they're leaking urine when they try to exercise, um, that those are all connected to the same issue. So when the core is not working right, there's other things that happen. So they're kind of like what I would call souvenirs of pregnancy that... <laughs> that we're just told live with it, don't worry about it, it'll get better on its own. And the truth is it will not get better on its own unless you have the right training, so. Yeah, um, I had and a, that's, I was talking to a lady the other day and she goes, well, I've just had three big babies. So that's what, I, this is what I have to live with. And she's one of my mom's friends. And I was like, you don't. She goes, I don't. I said, no, no this is not normal. But what right. you said is what all these women say is, well, I've just had this, so. Mm -hmm because I've had three big babies, it's not going to work for me. I just have to deal with this. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, the messages that we're hearing out there between the media, the, um, the pad commercials, I mean, I'm so sick of going down the aisle in the grocery store and seeing a whole aisle intended for incontinence. This is not how we treat this. It's not how it should be treated. It's a curable problem unless there is um, an issue with the brain connection to the muscles. But, you know, most of us, it's just that we were never trained properly in how to get these muscles rehabbed after we had a baby. So, and men can get this too. Um, the men we treat, it's more because they've um, done too many exercises like boot camp style classes. And they, they didn't have the issues, like they weren't feeling broken after they had a baby like we feel, but they're maybe overworking those muscles um, in the gym and they can get a split as well too, and, or they have a protruded abdomen. So, and I find it's a lot, it has a lot to do with the rib cage, you know, like if these are usually high stress people who, who are breathing from their upper respiratory muscles and their diaphragm just isn't moving enough. So it's important to coordinate all four of the core muscles. It's not just about the abdominal wall. There's actually four, four deep core muscles that we're, we're trying to get addressed when we're talking about the core. And, and the other thing is tight hips too. So you said, you know, women walking around, you know, they've got tight hips and that's going to be huge. Yes. Um, mommy hips. I think I've heard moms refer to them. Like they'll get up from a chair or they'll get up from, um, I've seen it happen so much at baseball. Like they're sitting in the bleachers and they stand up and they walk and they're wobbling like their hips are a tennis match. That is not normal either. <laughs> and there is a solution for that. And it's usually a symptom of the core and it kind of goes both ways because if the hips are tight, that doesn't allow the core to work properly. And if the mm. core isn't working, the hips get tight. So it just ends up being this vicious cycle that we can't seem to get out of because nobody's taken a look at us or told us that this was abnormal and there's something you can do to treat it. Okay. And so um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about too, that we talked about, um, and I said, some women deal with constipation, pelvic pain, even, or um, 
you went into the scars and adhesion that women don't even understand with scars and adhesions. You know, and I know we're talking about diastasis, but how all this, because if you're not having a functioning core, the diastasis doesn't really heal up properly. Correct? Right, right. So, so um, there's a couple things that I think of when, when I think about constipation or just abnormal function of the bowels. Um, adhesions from surgery, say from a C-section or even something that had just taken place years ago, like an appendectomy or an exploratory laparoscopy, that can create adhesions. And the adhesions are like shrink wrap around muscles, organs, blood vessels, and nerves. And so then it doesn't allow proper organ motility or mobility. So the organs aren't able to move and expand like they need to. So um, you could have this low transit colon <laughs> And especially after anesthesia, after you have um, a, a C-section or a surgery, things are kind of slow. Um, and then when you go to strain to go to the bathroom, then that, that makes you clench your pelvic floor muscles instead of relax them, which is, we need to both learn how to relax our muscles and contract them. So my motto is lengthen before you strengthen. So if you don't have the right length tension in those muscles and your organ motility is slow, then it's a recipe for you know, persistent constipation. And the other issue too is um, after you have a surgery like a C-section, and, and I'm talking to the moms out there who've had the C-sections, um, you have a risk for small bowel obstruction, which is a life-threatening condition. So if things aren't getting through the system fast enough and it's a backup of you know, toxic waste, it can, it can actually create problems um, in your health that you require hospitalization. So um, you know, learning, one of the things that Olivia and I will go through with our, um, our clients together is we work on gut motility, teaching how to ma massage your colon in the right direction, getting the ileocecal valve to, to actually open up, which is the valve between the small intestine and the colon, and then that helps improve gut motility. So there's all kinds of strategies, diaphragm breathing, just learning how to breathe right also puts a little pulse on the organs, and that also creates the... Um, the peristalsis or a wave of contractions within the, the digestive system. So um, having adhesions can disrupt digestion for sure. And even, oh, I'll, I'll mention this one, Olivia, we didn't talk about this, is nausea and, um, and just feeling sick. I had one woman, um, she, for I want to say nine years, was on anti-nausea medicine like three times a day. Nobody knew what was wrong with her. She came in to see me, not for this particular issue, <laughs> and this is how we often find the diastasis. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they, she came in for something totally unrelated, she thought. I think she was having just muscle pain and back pain and maybe headaches. And, and when I looked at her abdominal wall and I mobilized um, you know, the, the structures that were stuck, it did create the nausea, but then it got better. So each consecutive time I saw her after, she got down to where she doesn't take the nausea medicine anymore. So nausea and vomiting and just like acid reflux and, and digestive issues after you have um, a baby could be related to a diastasis and also lack of organ mobility. So um, these are the things we problem solve through when we meet with you um, because some people don't know that they're related and that they can actually be improved. So the goal is to not take the medication. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's not normal to be on lifelong medication either. So. Yeah, and so y'all just thought you were here to talk about the diastasis and the gap and the width. <laughs> That's what you thought. But what we have found, this is a whole body issue and mamas need to educate themselves to be able to be functioning and whole and healthy. And, but okay, so Janine, so after, you know, cause most women, you know, they wanna know, well, I just wanna close the gap. So how does dealing with all of this, these symptoms actually help the gap? Well, because we're teaching the muscles how to work properly, it stresses mm -hmm. the tissue, which then that creates um, the force that is needed to bring the gap back together. So the tissues need to be tensed a little bit with the right exercise, um, not the wrong exercise, because many of uh, you are probably doing the wrong exercise and you didn't even know it. I mean, the, the men I treat, that's the gr a great example of that. You can't put the cart before the horse. And a lot of people start out getting really like I'm going to do this all or nothing. And they get into a boot camp style class, not Olivia's boot camp style. Hers, hers is <laughs> a diastasis safe. <laughs> so to me, if you've had a baby, you should not be jumping into a boot, boot camp insanity or P90X or any of those 
you don't, it's not about getting a beach body. It's about getting a functioning body. And the results of that will come together when your core actually works properly. So, um, so for example, um, you know, if you had a cup with a straw and you plug the top, you know how you pull it out and there's still water in it and then you let go and the water comes down that atmospheric pressure created by the core working correctly will hold up your organs. It'll hold your back together. It'll do its job so that the hips don't have to hold you together. So when the core is working, you, you, your back shouldn't be hurting. You shouldn't have problems with digestion. You shouldn't have problems with um, organs, you know, feeling like they're dropping and bladder issues. I mean, the, most of the bladder issues are a symptom of, of the core not working properly. And I'll also mention pain with sex. So your muscles are supposed to be relaxed when you urinate, when you defecate, and when you have intimacy. And if they don't um, relax and open up, they're pulling on the vaginal walls and they're creating a lot of tension that creates pain or the sensation is off. So sometimes it's not just pain with penetration, it's also the sensation is altered, which then creates this uh, feeling like you're not, um, it's, it's not enjoyable or it's, it's, it's just off and, and it's, or it wasn't the same that it was before you had the baby. So, um, and the scar can also pull on that almost like all the way to the tailbone, just from having that scar, um, by, by your pubic bone over the bladder. So, um, there's so many things that can happen from having a C-section and, and, and having a diastasis is one of them. Um, and also just having a baby because, you know, it's, it's trauma, no matter w how you look at it. And those muscles have, um, even with the, the healthiest pregnancy, you still have to retrain these muscles that have been altered from having a baby and the alignment because the rib cage is, is expanded and, and kind of flared out. So the ribs kind of flare out. And then the back, we kind of stand where we hang on our ligaments and, and we tuck our bums underneath us. So mm -hmm. the tail tucking, you know, so all of that, um, most moms lose their butt after they have a baby. And, and I know, you know what I'm talking about because it's like, what happened to my butt? <laughs> you know, that's, that's, a, <laughs> unless you train it, it's just, it's gone. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It goes it's on vacation it does <laughs> permanently. Vacation. Where did permanently. you go? You need to come back. Unless yeah. you train it, yeah. You have to train it. So um, that's what we do. We The program is called the Diastasis Fix Bootcamp. It's online. It's a week program. So you learn everything that Janine's talking about. Um, you learn how to stand properly in correct alignment. You learn how to breathe properly. And some people just want to get... But I just want this one exercise. I just want it to help me. But it's really not about that. <laughs> there's just like you hear, there's so much more going on. And, and maybe you're somebody who doesn't have leakage, but you have something else that we talked about. That's why it's important to really look at yourself, what's going on in your body so that you can get the help you need. Some people, you know, Janine, I'll talk to them and they'll say, well, I don't deal with any of that. It's just the diastasis or it's just, you know, it's just the split or something. But more often than not, you know, I've got women who they do have tight hips or, you know, they, they're, they don't realize like they are not, um, they just don't understand that that was an issue with the core. So they're going to treat it by um, trying to do just a stretch for it or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and it's not about the stretching. You're going to be chasing after it until mm -hmm. you address the real issue or the root issue. So yeah, that's, that's very common. So um, yeah, uh, what, what Olivia gives you, the exercises are really great at helping to re-coordinate those muscles or retrain those muscles that got lost from having a baby. And, um, and the program works. I mean, the results are, are amazing. And they are amazing and you have to have it all together. And we're gonna talk about something with mindset here in just a minute and how it all goes together. But just for instance, like I think about Amanda when she had her knee issue, right? Well, mm -hmm. you started working on her core and her back and then her knee issue went away or mm -hmm. Erin, who had headaches all the time and started working on her pelvic floor, and then her headaches started, you know, 
going that was away. a huge light bulb moment for for even us uh, knowing yeah. and understanding that if you re if you have the right tension in the pelvic floor everything above it will be better too so most people do not link headaches to their pelvic floor <laughs> and jaw clenching <laughs> yeah we we did a lot with jaw clenching too because when you clamp down here and you clamp your mouth you're also clamping um, the esophageal sphincter and the rectal sphincter so you can't have those muscles clenched at all, you know, if you relax your mouth, you're going to relax your pelvic floor. And if you relax your pelvic floor, it's going to relax your jaw and help with the TMJ and, and the neck and headache issues too. So it is all connected. We are one whole body. Um, that's, that's what's, um, it's not really, I think it's, it seems like a mystery, but to me, it's not really a mystery because it all goes together. You know, and I have, um, like I said, that every woman that comes to me is different, but a some of them are, they consider themselves type A. Well, what I have found, type A personalities are a little bit harder to get the diaphragm turned on. Like they can't feel it. They can't breathe with it very well. Or um, some women can actually breathe with their diaphragm a little easier than others. So women kind of freak out. They will be like, I can't, I cannot do this. I can't, it's taken me four days and I cannot figure out. Now, you know, I always say, Lay down on the ground. Let's not fight against gravity for a little bit, and then you can feel it better. But um, do you see that too? Like, oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I think we're so, all, even if we're not Type A personalities, um, <laughs> we're we're all kind of experiencing a, a, the, the same amount of stress. <laughs> so, and some of us are experiencing more stress than others. But I don't know anybody who doesn't have stress in their life. So it's it's how we respond to that stress. Um, and we're not even aware that we're holding our breath. So when you're holding your, your diaphragm or your breath, you're holding your pelvic floor clenched too. And the muscles can't not, they cannot contract properly if they're held tight. Um, you can't tighten a muscle that's already in its shortened state. So you have to lengthen that muscle first and then strengthen it. So, but you know, we are, we're able to identify those issues. So when the moms come on, we can talk and, and resolve some of these problems. Some of them have been long-term problems that again didn't even know they were linked because now this is their fourth baby or their fifth baby and and they've had this issue probably since their first baby or even when they were athletes um when they were younger before they even had babies they were having some of these issues too so so that's the nice thing about be, having us as a team is that you get to problem solve and work out yes. other issues that you've had right and do you think that okay so another question is some women think that they just can't heal if they've had a C-section, you know, or they're scared, you know, what's the difference between healing a diastasis with a C-section compared to a, you know, vaginal delivery? Well, they, they both have problems, different problems. I mean, some of the people that have a C-section have even more problems than the women who had the vaginal delivery. Um, because on top of having those muscles stretched out for nine months, um, they may have tried to have a vaginal delivery that ended up turning into a C-section, but um, the, the C-section creates more adhesions. I mean, the same thing would be like if, if you had an episiotomy or if you had a really bad tear. I mean, that, that also needs to be healed because there's nerves that get caught up in that. And, um, and especially when, when there's a C-section or a... a um, a scar right over the bladder, the bladder kind of gets adhered and it doesn't move properly. So it cannot fill. It's like a balloon that's trying to expand. It cannot expand. So that's, that's part of the, you know, oh, I have a small bladder ever since I had my baby thing, you know, and I have to stop at every bathroom. And if you learn how to work on your scar, which is what we will teach you and work on, on how to mobilize the structures that are tight, then that can be significant. And and if you can't get the, the, all the answers from this online program, then we instruct you on where you, you get help outside of, of, um, of doing this, you know, from a remote location. So, but Janine's um, very good at teaching how we can do things ourselves as well. Um, how we can, and you still, there's going to be times where you need to go and see somebody, but she also, you know, it's great after you see somebody, you learn how you can do some of these massage techniques or pressure point techniques, um, even internally, if you have to, Janine, you know, taught us how to do that as well. So um, we're not helpless when we're home by ourselves. <laughs> 
And if we're empowered, we can empower ourselves and we can empower our children and our future generations. So that's the thing. I mean, you don't want to feel like a victim. This didn't just happen to you. Um, I mean, it did, but there's something you can do about it. You don't have to stay in that, um, in that same state that you were in. So the, the whole idea is empowerment and learning how to take care of yourself and problem solving through. Like if, if I feel this way, then I can do this. So, and that by the time women complete the program, they usually can sort out on their own and then they don't need, you know, any more coach or maybe they need a little bit more coaching as well, just to continue with the exercises, but they learn how to take care of themselves. So my job is to make myself obsolete as a therapist. That's always been our thing is like, if we, if we have not taught our patients what to do, then we have not done our job. So, and not every therapist has that mindset and not every person has that mindset, but that's the mindset I have is I have to teach you how to take care of yourself because you're with yourself 24 seven. So, and, and that's really empowering and it gives you a lot of, um, it makes you feel better about yourself and then you can tell other people about it too. And, and it's, it's just a, a better place to be when it comes to your mind, body and spirit, which is kind of leading up to what <laughs> Olivia always, always talks about with mindset. <laughs> Yes, and that's that's one of my favorite things to do <laughs> for moms. It's just, it's been huge in my life. And just before we talk about that a little bit, um, you know, Dancy, we have a, a nutritionist on our team, and I'm going to be doing a video with her later today as well. And um, because nutrition is also huge with core and functioning and um, gut health. It's just, like I said, this is just all combined. So you're going to learn. It might even be more important. I mean, one of the most important pieces <laughs> because you can have what you feel like you have the right knowledge, but if you don't have the nutrition component, then you're, you're really going to miss out on a big piece of how to heal from the inside out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, again, if you're looking for one magic exercise, you can find that. You can try to find that. <laughs> it's just not going to work. And that's why we have the, you know, we're in here with, with you for eight weeks so we can teach you. And um, so let's kind of talk about um, core. So this is, um, this is so important to me and Janine. That's why another reason we connected. And I, I want you to go ahead and talk about that with how you did this in your business uh, with the word core and what it means. So core, um, when we hear the word core, sometimes we think sit-ups crunches, we think of like just the abdominal wall or just the abs. Um, the core that we're referring to is four different muscles and those are the muscles that are needing the most rehab. So, um, but from a spiritual standpoint, the core means so much more than that. The core actually, if, it, if you translate it as a root word in Latin, it means heart. So the tagline for my business is healthy women equals healthy families, but it's also healthy core um, because my business is called healthy core. So healthy core equals healthy women equals healthy family. So to me, it starts at the mom. The mom is the core of her family because core means heart. <laughs> Um, when you translate it. So if you heal the core physically, you're also healing a mom's heart internally. And it's like a three-legged stool. I mean, if you have a stool, you can't have balance if one of those legs of the stool is off, <laughs> you know, so mind, body, and spirit. So you can get, you can get your body fixed, but you have to have the mind and the emotion part with it in, in, um, in the spiritual side of it. Or you can, you can work so much on the other elements, but if you don't have the physical part in place, then you're still going to be like off balance. That stool isn't going to be level. So uh, getting the moms to be healthier. And, and I speak from experience. When I had my first baby, I wasn't the healthiest. And part of it, I mean, I could go on my whole history and explain it, but long story short is, you know, I had high risk pregnancies. I was a, an orthopedic therapist, so I didn't have this knowledge that I'm now sharing with everybody. Um, I had to learn it on my own, just like we're teaching you. So 20 years ago, I had to learn how to get my body both physically healthy during pregnancy and then after, after recovering from three babies. And it was a journey because it didn't come natural and it wasn't something. So like if you go to see a physical therapist, they, unless they're trained specifically in the pelvis, 
and in how the core works, they may not have the knowledge to be able to help you. And then you give up and say, well, I tried and I didn't get the mm -hmm. help I needed. Or same thing with a trainer. Not all trainers understand the core. Um, and having that experience and also learning and, and growing. I mean, we, we have had an extensive training to try to, to understand it, to help ourselves. So then we want to share that with, with our um, clients. So it's, it's learning how to help yourself and put the oxygen mask on yourself and then be able to give it to those that are around you. And when I, when I finally like started to heal myself, my children were, were thriving. So the fruits of what I did ended up expanding, you know, exponentially. And I probably will never understand how it all worked um, and how it's <laughs> still working in their lives. But I really had to, it was like putting up a mirror in front of my face and, and looking at the good, bad, and the ugly and saying, what can I change? Because I was in pain and I wasn't a very like patient mom. And I wasn't, you know, my children were, were getting the wrath of mom, you know, being um, in pain all the time. And it wasn't, it wasn't their fault. And you know, I didn't want to project that, that blame on them, but I didn't, I didn't know how to heal. And mm -hmm. I really needed the help to, to get through that. So, so with that, that's why it's very passionate for me when it's like one of the dimensions of the stool or one of those legs gets balanced, then the others can, can also get balanced. So it's, it's a full body, full um, body spirit. Yeah. It's, 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 um, it's not just your physical healing, but it's, it's to help heal your entire family and marriages too. I mean, if I didn't know what I knew about sexuality and, and the way the body works and the way the female body is and how it receives another body part for, for intimacy. I mean, this is amazing when we really think about our, our human sexuality and the gift that we have of being moms. And it's not a curse. It's actually a huge blessing. And to be able to have another life and, and be able to nurture it and nourish it, but we want to be the best at that. We don't want to just be doing it halfway. And, and that's what I felt I was doing for many years until I finally was able to heal myself. And I'm sure Olivia can relate to that too. So um, it's a journey and, and you're, and we're all in a different journey. We're all in a different, like, you know, timeline or, or there's no race. There's no like who somebody needs to get there quicker. It's more, let's, let's help pull each other through because we're all needing this. And, and just imagine society and on a whole, if moms were healthier, I mean, so their families, everything, you know, I mean, we can't change our husbands. We can only model for them what we want them to do. And if we don't even know what we want, how are we supposed to express to them or communicate to them what, what that is? So that's, right. that's my little <laughs> piece of it. Long well, and, and, and so, I mean, I know it sounds crazy when you're just saying, I just want to know the symptoms, the diastasis, and we're talking about all this, but we are a whole person, body, mind, mm -hmm. and it does not function if you just work on the physical. So mm -hmm. what, and I love to study about emotions and in the body and trauma, releasing trauma from the body. So um, if you deal with um, maybe a loss of control, loss of power, uh, this is what I've studied, or um, you have buried emotions that can actually show up in lower back pain and pelvic issues. So learning how to get some of those thoughts under control and releasing trauma or releasing these things from the body is so important. And that's what I love to do is to come into also and to help release some of these things that have been going on in your body to release some of these emotions because um, I've, you know, it's, it's amazing that I've taken people through some mindset who maybe who have been grieving for a long time mm. or um, have uh, been abused and hadn't gone through some of this healing. And it's, it was weird. It was like they had tried everything with their diastasis and their, their tummy was just bloated and they trying to do everything right. But when we got, to this part of it, not that their gap was going, I mean, it was working, but when we kind of pinpointed some of those issues and worked on them, their core started functioning better. It was just amazing to me. Like I said, our clients have been, uh, to me, been my, some of my best teachers and I watched mm -hmm. them. And so I just know if you have stress, I know sometimes it can 
go into cortisol levels that can cause bloating, or then you have, it can cause stress, can cause inf inflammation in your body, even in the gut area. So <laughs> have you seen that as well, Janine? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and just um, the, having the willpower too, I mean, the strength that you get in your mental ability to do things or to say no to things or to say yes to other things can really help accelerate that healing as well too. So it's, um, it really just makes you feel stronger and, and you can battle every day that comes up instead of waking up in the morning and feeling like, oh no, what's going to happen to me today? You know, it's like just putting yourself in the right frame of mind. So um, if you're physically feeling up to the challenge, then those other things will not be as, mm -hmm. as, as difficult to deal with. Um, but if you're, right. if you're dealing with all of them at the same time, it's like a perfect storm and, and you need help to get through that. So that's what, you know, we want. And maybe they only need one piece of the puzzle. Right, right. You know, right. not everybody's going to want it, but it's here if you need mm -hmm. a piece of the puzzle. And I think it's, we're layers. So we, we can, you know, we'll just continue going you can take this, maybe learn a little bit, maybe you'll go a little bit deeper. And then you can go a little bit deeper. So you don't have to have all of this perfect down by the eight weeks. Mm -mm. You know, you, this is a learning process. And um, we're still healing. I'm still healing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a continual thing, but knowing and being gentle with yourself is really key too. You know, not, not being such a control freak that, you know, you expect perfection out of yourself and then you expect perfection out of other people. And it's just not realistic so you just yeah you learn to give yourself grace and, and accept mm -hmm. that grace that's in your life so um yeah it's um it's wonderful when all of it comes into um when it's all working as it should so yeah. we want to look at it as a lifestyle right and not a microwave <laughs> thinking here let's, slow coat or, yeah, let's slow cooker. look at this as a lifestyle change it's gonna empower you it's going to make you healthy for the rest of your life mm -hmm. yeah I, I think i interrupted you Jean. do you remember what you're going to say <laughs> no 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 i'm just agreeing i'm just yes 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 <laughs> and, and uh, oh, oh go ahead go ahead no no you go ahead i won't forget i won't forget because i have my note here oh no i'm fine i was finished i was just saying that that's why we work together so well because we, we yes <laughs> We've been there, done that, you know, and, and it's taken us a lot of, of educating ourselves. So now we want to share that and, and be able to, um, you know, increase the blessings in your life. So, And it's never too late. It's mm -mm. Not, I don't want, if you're in your 50s or your 60s, it's not too late. You if know? your baby's 30, it's okay. <laughs> They're yeah. still healing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, um, if you're pregnant, what if you're pregnant? We love to work with pregnant moms, and I actually have a fit pregnancy um, boot camp. That's what it's called that you can do instead of the diastasis one. You're going to learn great things, and you'll still be in the Facebook group with us, and you'll still get to do the live videos with us. So um, if that's you, just let me know, and you'll get that program. Um, so and even Dancy has provided in that one a natural birthing course if you want to do. Um, get your mindset right to have a natural birth. So Nancy's our nutritionist, but she's also added that into it. So um, if you're interested in that, because we, I, oh, it just drives me crazy, Janine, when I hear people say, well, what can I do after I'm pregnant? Okay, and I need to work on this after I'm pregnant. And I'm like, no, yeah. I need to, them to understand, let's work on this now. It's mm -hmm do it now. If I can get Nine months is a long time to suffer if you're having issues. Mm -hmm. And, and even then I like to work with women before they get pregnant. So those are, I, I get so excited when a mom is proactive and wants to learn what she can do before she's even pregnant. And that is because she's going to know so much more during her pregnancy. She's going to ward off a lot of these symptoms and problems that other people are having. And she's going to have a healthier delivery and baby like less She'll be able to push stronger. She'll be stronger. She'll be stretching her pelvic floor while she's pregnant. She'll be activating her core the entire time so that as the belly grows, it's not going to be so much more difficult to do it later on. So yes, I love to get moms when they're early on in pregnancy, plus all the ligament laxity and, and all the issues that come with 
with the pelvis becoming unstable when you're pregnant. And, you know, my, my thing is that I tell moms is you're never going to be the same after you have a baby. So that's a, you know, hello alarm. (laughs) Like it's not, it's not like you just bounce back. You don't just go back to where you were. You have some permanent changes that occurred with when those ligaments stretched out to prepare your pelvis to widen. And that permanent change creates lack of, of a um, form or a force closure, uh, which is what some therapists have referred to it. Um, Diane Lee in particular, um, she's in mm-hmm. Canada, but she says, you know, your, your structural support gets inherently lost and that inherent core control goes away after you've been pregnant. So after pregnancy, you need even more muscle support than you ever had. The problem is now you're becoming a manual labor. You're going out, you're lifting infant care, you're lifting bags, you're doing all this stuff, all these juggling, all these things up in the air, and you're not strong enough to do that job. So, you know, any other job that, you know, if you're going to be an athlete, you train for that. (laughs) Any other thing that you do, you have to have training to be the best version at that. And we wonder why, you know, we're, we're this mentality of, of, oh, just go home, take care of your baby and you'll heal is hogwash. It's wrong. It's a myth. <laughs> so don't let your doctor tell you that. And if your doctor tells you that, they just don't know. Right. They don't know. And they should know. Um, they some, don't. Of them, some of them know, but they have so much more to, to do as in their job to keep you alive, keep the baby alive. I mean, they have to keep up with so much so many things that the, that the healing part after they've discharged you, after you're done having the baby, that's not their job. So if we work as a team, you know, a lot of OBGYNs send people to me and they recognize that, that there's healing, you know, still that it's occurring into the, the childbearing year, which takes place three months to even a year after you have the baby. So, and, and it, it's ongoing, you know, it's never too late to heal, but you know, the fact that we're just sending moms home from the hospital or, or from their births and not giving them this education, I just, it, it, that's where my passion lies because it's, it's nonsense. This day and age should never, this should not be the norm. And I will not rest until this, every mom, <laughs> I shout from the rooftop or the mountains, every mom should hear this message. So you know, even if it's not something that you think you could benefit from, share this with other moms that you know. I mean, their healing is possible and the human body heals itself if it has the right environment, but it won't heal properly if it's not given the attention that it needs. Um, so, and that's, that's really what this is all about. And, you know, I have women who will take this program who don't even have the gap. They're not dealing with diastasis, but maybe they're having prolapse issues or maybe they're having pelvic pain. So I know it's called the diastasis fix. And I wish now, sometimes I'm like, well, maybe I need to change the name to something else. I don't know. But I just know that this is so much broader than that. It's so much more than that. And so if you're dealing with low back pain, it, you know what? Every mom needs to learn this. That's just to the point that I, this is how we're supposed to function. This is how we're supposed to do things. Um, even if you don't think you're broke, you're broke. You need yeah. help. <laughs> yeah. Or if it's, it's not, not, yeah, if it's not broken, you got to break it and fix it because it is, yeah. it's altered. You don't know long-term what this is going to do if you don't get this fixed. I mean, the moms that we treat 30, 40 years after they have children, they say, why wasn't this available when I was having my children? Or why didn't somebody tell me I'm not supposed to bear down or hold my breath when I pick something up? You know, if somebody yeah. would have just given them that knowledge of, proper breathing when they pick something up or lift, you know, and instead of pushing everything back down onto that area that's already been um, weakened. So um, that's, we do a ton of breath control, a ton of, um, you know, just exercise getting that, those coordination of those muscles along with the diaphragm. So um, that's, it's essential. It's, this is not just something that, that you should do because you have a diastasis, like Olivia said, it's essential for all moms to know. But it's the pain that motivates. Yeah, pain or, or a split will motivate a mom to get in here. Or, mm-hmm. or a leak. Sometimes moms will just put a pad on or say, they, you know, my doctor gave me medication for this. So, And I have to tell you, those medications are not cheap. I mean, sometimes they're like $800 a month out-of-pocket expenses for medication to help with urinary urgency you know, or what's called overactive bladder. I, mm-hmm. That is ridiculous. It's a pelvic floor problem. It's a core issue. And um, you know, if your doctor tells you, or, or I love the one, oh, I'm, I have, 
I have a little bit of incontinence, you know, mom will tell um, their um, OBGYN and then they, they're in surgery two weeks later to hold up or sling it up surgically. Well, that doesn't take care of the problem because seven years later they have to have it redone or now they have other problems because they have adhesions from the surgery. So, you know, the, the thing you want to do first is you want to try to rehab it, fix the, the core issue, which is usually a myofascial issue. <laughs> And, mm -hmm. and, and then from there, if that doesn't work, then, and the, only then should you opt for surgery. Nobody should be cutting you. There's nothing to surgically improve here unless you fix the muscles first. So, and I have people cancel surgery all the time after, after coming, you know, so, and think about, you know, awesome. being down and out after that. I mean, that's, that's, um, that's going to set you back a few weeks and who's going to take care of the kids and everything else while you're under surgery. So, um, it's, it's a common surgery, but it's, it's over, it's done too much. It doesn't have to be done. So, yeah. And myofascial, that's a whole nother deal. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the it's hips, easy. the that's hips lift up. Thing. I know. And we could teach you so much that you yeah. know, that's why we're so excited because the hips are what lift up the pelvic floor. So <laughs> the tight hip issue goes back to all of this is that the, the muscles, the pelvic floor will not be held up properly if the hips are tight because the hips are the attachment point, like at the ends of the hammock. So they have to be functioning correctly too. So this is not just about the, the abdominal split. This is not just about the pelvic floor. It's, you can't isolate it to one issue. It's a system that has to work together. Right. And, um, and that's, that's what we do, so. Okay. Well, I think that's pretty good. I, um, I think that's awesome. So we just, our hearts is really to get moms in here to really educate you, teach you, get you better, get you healthy for the rest of your life. So I really, I mean, I absolutely love the, the team of women that we have to make this happen. It's such a blessing. It's a whole body issue. It, there's, it's, to me, it's like there was these pieces of the puzzle that this one was missing and then this was missing. Mm -hmm. It's all come together now and it's beautiful. So yeah. if you're watching this, Right now, the next uh, boot camp is November 19th. Um, we would love to have you, you know, go ahead and register. I'll have a link somewhere around this video. If you are watching a replay and November 19th has already passed, then um, I will have a wait list somewhere to get on to join the next one. So um, just remember if you're pregnant or whatever, we, we've got you covered both ways. So. Anyways, um, I hope this was very educational for you and you learned a lot and now you won't just be looking for one magic exercise. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pill. <laughs> There's no magic pill. So you know, no. we will talk to y'all later. Okay. Thanks everyone. Okay.